So we're a triple hemispherectomy family, as I like to say. Here we go. Here's surgery number one. Whoop, surgery number two. Um, in between those two surgeries, he developed hydrocephalus, left hem hemispherotomy was shunted to the left side. Uh, seizures came back. This is surgery number three when he was three and a half years old. The seizures came back after that, and you could probably guess he had all of the side effects of anatomical hemispherectomy that the literature talks about not happening anymore, like brain shift, right? Um, I actually went to the medical school library to pull this paper uh, the old-fashioned way like I used to as an undergrad, um, and the research will say, well, no one gets brain shift anymore. Well, my son did. My son did. Um, he did have... A several shunt revisions, and this isn't going to play. That's okay. And at about this time, his neurosurgeon had a stroke. So we had to go uh, elsewhere. Um, lots of vomiting, which to a shunt mom sounds like shunt failure. Tons of ER visits, but you know what else causes vomiting? Central diabetes insipidus. So for a nonverbal kid who's suddenly vomiting a ton, and collapsing on his legs, I'm thinking shunt is failing, but actually what happened was is he de developed central diabetes insipidus years after his anatomical hemispherectomy. Why I think the hydrocephalus caused it, all that pressure, I'm not sure. Was it just the natural progression of the anatomical, the brain shift, who knows? Lots of ER visits, lots of in and out where we were trying to figure out what was happening. Uh, the surgeon at this other hospital decided, let's take the right side of his cranium off, thin it down, make it really, really small, uh, really thin, and then put it back on so that we create more space for that fluid because that shunt's not working. We can't dial it down anymore. There's nothing more we can do. About that time, we said, this is a good time to have one of the many orthopedic surgeries that we've needed because, you know, he's got hemiparesis and, of course, everything would happen here. This is when he first woke up from surgery, and then after that he was asleep for about two weeks, and we didn't know why. We eventually found out that he had um, very uh, lots of periventricular swelling from hydrocephalus. Um, this was just a video to show you um, what it looks like when a nonverbal kid has hydrocephalus. Uh, he was reaching out for me like this, like he couldn't see me. And I talked to Terry about it last Friday, and we think that his optic nerve swelling was so bad that he probably lost a lot of vision, but he couldn't tell me, Mom, I can't see because he can't talk. In and out of the hospital a lot, finally got admitted. They did an EEG. He was having lots of seizure activity. We did a nuclear shunt study. The shunt was flowing just fine. Um, so I was told, you know, there's nothing more we can do for him, and you need to go home and call hospice. <clears throat> I didn't do that. I went home and I called Sue Udovan, the nurse practitioner at UCLA, who immediately connected me with Dr. Sankar at UCLA again. And Dr. Sankar said, could you please come back to us? And we did that on, on the following Monday. Uh, I feel sorry for Dr. Fala. Again, I'll say that for the second time because that was the first time we walked into your office and I said, I think his ventricles are huge even though this other hospital says they look normal and you agreed with me and so you shunted the ventricle on the other side. Um, then that skull expansion collapsed over his healthy hemisphere because when you reduce all that brain swelling with that shunt, um, the brain swelling goes down, and guess what, what happens to that, that cranial expansion? It goes down. He ended up sleeping on it before we could figure out what was going on, so it got jammed up underneath the, the skull on the left. And this is uh, after Dr. Fala and another one of his colleagues at UCLA completely reconstructed his skull. And knock wood, we have been great ever since. Um, <laughs> this is on a flight recently. <clears throat> this is not, it's an extreme story, but it is not rare. I know families in our community that are on their 19th, 20th, 25th revision. Um, I say he's the most interesting man in the world because he is a man. He's been in Tanner stage four since he was about nine. I call him, he's like Burt Reynolds from the waist down. We have to shave him. <laughs> We have to shave him. He's got armpit hair. Um, he's got all the good things that come along with uh, being a fully developed man, but in a little 12-year-old body. So I hope that, at a minimum, his story educates everyone that 
uh, one of those things over there on that chart will be a better understanding of hydrocephalus post large resection and a be better understanding of the endocrine challenges that can follow. Thanks. Thank you.